at least name I. Okay, so I'm uh, <coughs> David Chow, and I'm the master of the Graduate House. First of all, I would like to thank you for coming to tonight's event. And this is a talk organized by the house. And it is actually one of the events that we, a series of events that we organize to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the Graduate House. And tonight, I have the great honor of introducing Dr. Li Hui. He is a speaker tonight, and he is very special to us because he used to stay with us in the Graduate House. He was one of our residents. Uh, Ananda Nai. And he now is an associate professor in the Faculty of Education, and he is the coordinator of the Early Childhood Education Program of the university. He obtained his PhD from the university in the year of 2000. His research interests lie in developmental psychology and um, school-based development and education policy and so on and so forth. He is a very famous scholar and has received a lot of research funding from the government, GRF funding, and has published many, many very important papers in this area. And thank you again for coming to uh, the, the Graduate House to present tonight's talk on planning and managing your PhD for better academic of the week. And it's my great honor and privilege to be here today because as Billy said that, I am the first cohort resident of Hong, Hong Kong U Graduate House. That was 1998 and 2000. And after that, I left Hong Kong U to work in Hong Kong Institute of Education. And I, I worked as a lecturer there for five years. And I rejoined Hong Kong U in the year of 2005. Um, I've been here for seven years now. So today I'm going to uh, give you a personal sharing about how to better plan and manage your PhD in Hong Kong U for better academic life. And I think most of you have encountered the following problems, or most of you have shared my concerns as this. For example, the first one, you have no idea what is your topic, and you have no idea about how to do it. And this is very common in all faculty. Last month, I chaired a viva of a, a confirmation seminar for one of our students. It's her second trial. That means she failed last year. Last year, she didn't know what is her research topic. So we gave her one more year to do confirmation. So last month, I came to chair her confirmation seminar again. This time, she has made some progresses. She had clear idea about her, her research topic, but unfortunately, she has no idea about research problem. There is no single slide about her research problems. So the internal panel member asked her, my dear student, what are your research questions? She said, oh my god, I forgot I should have present my research problems but I don't know what are my research problems. Then, we failed her again. 
And we give her another half year for this problem to present her research problems clearly and logically. Now you realize that it's not you. There are many of you. They are encountering the same question, a problem. That is, they have no idea about what in their research question and what should they do in the following five, five years. And the second problem is poor planning and no agenda. And they are very happy to be here, to be a research student, but don't know how to do it as a plan. And the third one, it is methodological difficulties. There are different approaches. There are quantitative approaches, qualitative approaches. Which kind of approach should I use for my study? I have no idea. My supervisor said that I should use quantitative, but my co-supervisor says that I should use qualitative. And they are still fighting against each other, so what should I do? And some of you may have writing problems. You don't know how to write. And this is very common among our Chinese students. I have a friend, he's still writing her, his thesis. And do you know when he has registered for PhD study? It is his fifth or twelfth years of writing. Okay. That means he has registered for PhD student for more than 11 years. And he's still writing. And last week, I called my colleagues or my, one of my uh, colleagues or students or friends, you can name him in any um, aspects. And he is now working in mainland China and he's still writing, but he couldn't submit. He couldn't complete his writing. And his supervisor emailed him a warning letter. So give me the thesis at the end, at the end of this month. Otherwise, I'll fail you. This is 50 years. And many of my friends or students or some colleagues, they have shared the same problem with me. And this is a very common case among us. And that 12th writing year is a case from America not from Hong Kong U. Okay. And social isolation is another kind of problem. Some people came here without any friend as a stranger to a new context. And their challenge ahead of them, there are so many, among, one of, uh, among them is one that is they have no friends, no social networking. And sometimes you feel very lonely. Sometimes you feel very helpless, and this is quite common. So we are going to talk to you how to overcome these difficulties in the following years. And some, the six ones, some personal, personal problems, such as you are very single, and you are uh, looking for some friends, even boyfriends or girlfriends. Or some of you are also married, still available, that is MBA, <laughs> and yes, MBA, so you still have some problem personally, okay? And the last one, your headache, maybe shared by most of you sitting here today, that is you have very weak supervisor, you have no supervision from so-called your supervisors. Then if you share one of the seven concerns, please hands up. Do you have one of the concerns? Hands up, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. If you have two of them, please hands up. OK, some of you. OK, thank you. That means I have some talk to you, OK, today, at least tonight. Then you have seven concerns to overcome. I have some strategies to share with you. That is, you need to solve the problems. You need to plan and manage your study as far as possible and as early as possible. And I use the two terms 
wisely and strategically. That means you need to be very smart and strategic. And two topics should be covered. Topic one, how to plan your PhD study. Topic two, how to manage your PhD study. Here is a metaphor. We know that a butterfly has to undergo four stages within one month. And from an egg to butterfly, there are four stages. And every stage is very important to the final stage. And you are the butterfly. <coughs> and first one, if you are the first year student, you are still in the egg stage. And you are fixed to a supervisor, that's the green leaf. OK. And you have sometimes two supervisors. For example, in North faculty education, we have a compulsory co-supervision system. That means everyone should have two supervisors, one primary. The second is co-supervisor. And that means you have two leaves to be stick with. I don't know whether it's a good thing or it's a bad news, but be careful. And when you get confirmed, maybe you become a caterpillar. That is the second year, and you need to eat up all the resources and leaves Hong Kong U provides to you to become a pupa. That is the third stage. The st third stage is a writing, analyzing, and finalizing stage. You need to <coughs> collect, da collect data, analyze data, and write up a thesis, and then be pre prepared for the final stage. At that stage, you will complete metamorphosis. That is a, uh, the final and critical stage, <coughs> transformation. And when you go through this transformation, you will become the most beautiful butterfly. And that's the most beautiful moment of your life. It's very important. And coincidentally, the ancient Greek word butterfly means mind. I think this linkage shows us your PhD life is definitely a butterfly life because both you and the butterfly are pre-programmed. Then think about your own study. You are also programmed to three or four years. And sometimes you may think, oh my god, I have three years to go, I have four years to go. It's a huge amount of time. No, you are wrong because during the following years, you have to produce 10,000 words thesis. And you have to go through the four difficult stages to become a beautiful butterfly. Then you can talk to yourself. Ask yourself, butterfly, butterfly, you need to plan and manage your life right now. And topic one, how to plan your, man your PhD study at Hong Kong U. The first question, normally we use the 5W1H approach to ask questions. 5W stands for who, when, what, where, why, and the 1H stands for how. So the first question is, who should plan, plan for this study? That's you. It's not your supervisor's job to, show, to, to chase you into your peer study. It's you, yourself to manage the whole study life. And your supervisor and co-supervisors can only tell you whether your plan is workable or not workable. But they have no responsibilities to plan it. It's you who is in charge of it. Then you may ask me how to plan it. I give you my 7S approach. First one, you need to break your process down into steps. And normally you can, step, you can uh, break down into four stages. And for every step, you need to make up a realistic PhD stack schedule 
That's the second S. And every stage, you need to have goals. The goals should be very clear and workable. And every stage, uh, every strategies and tasks should be matched together. That means whenever you have a task, you'd better have some very workable strategies. And the last one is your submission. That's the big day. And I suggest you plan your big day one year earlier than your expected graduation day. For example, if you are expecting graduation on the year of 2018, or 14, sorry, too late. 14, then your submission day should be 2013, one year earlier than your final graduation day. Then you may ask me how to do that. I have A, B, C, D, E, five tips to share with you. All of this are personal tips, okay? First, I suggest you take your research proposal as the route map. And without route map, you will get lost very easily. If you have personal experience to drive in strange countries, then you really understand the importance of planning ahead. Planning ahead to get a road map. So I, I enjoy driving in different countries, lands, forests, rivers in summertime. So every time when I went out for journey, I did plan some road map. Okay? And also, I took my iPad, iPhone, and all the GPS <coughs> device because it's very easy to get lost when you do a journey, an adventure. And your PhD study at Hong Kong U is definitely a kind of adventure, a journey. So the A stands for allocating time to all of your list things. And that is the time consuming estimation. So suppose you have a research proposal, and you have procedures, and you have stages. So every stage and every step takes time in your schedule. And second, B, block time for some practicalities. That means some realities, some things where you happen. For example, your travel, your field work, you have to do some case studies, you have to go to conference, and all these things will take time. My friends know that I prefer not to take international conference so frankly because I prefer writing in office because every international conference will take you more than two weeks you have to prepare for the abstract you have to submit you have to prepare for the trip you have booked the flight and hotel and you have all the things to go through that takes time so block time for all the things and see that means you need to communicate and meet with your supervisors very frankly and regularly. And this should be put into their diaries. And I understand that some supervisors in Hong Kong, you are very busy and they never show up to you. And some supervisors, they are very world-class scholar. That means they have to fly every week or every other day. I have some colleagues, they are number one in the field, in the world. So they have one third time on the plane, and one third time at airport, and one third time at work. So it's not easy to get them. Then you have to try your best to put your name on their diary, on their schedule. That's very important. And D, you have to delete all the red marks from your diaries. The red marks are the red days mean holidays, public holidays, and some other holidays. For example, your friends' weddings and your weddings. <laughs> okay, I, I, I encourage my student not to get married during their study at Hong Kong U. I mean, you can say that I'm so cruel, I'm so rude, oh no, I'm so nice. 
I encourage them not to get married during study. I encourage them not to give birth during study because <laughs> in that way you have to delete the whole year from your schedule. And that's a dramatic change of your life. After giving birth, your mind will be thoroughly changed. Your first priority will not be your PhD, but your baby. <laughs> and your supervisor, who knows? Who is that guy? And all the things will be changed. And it takes the whole world <coughs> upside down. So I personally, uh, nicely, uh, I would encourage my students First, not to get married. Second, not give a birth. Mm -hmm. And that's my encouragement. Okay. And this is very important. And you will know that if you have gone through all these things. And the last one is E. Eliminating those commitments that are irrelevant to your studies. That means anything not relevant to your studies, you'd better not do that. And it's very important, be focused, be dedicated, is the key to success. And there are no other shortcuts, but just be focused. And the ideal schedule for your Hong Kong PhD study, I have suggestions for you. And of course, it's up to you to input time into your study you can decide. In the past of 15 years studying at Hong Kong U, I did observe some special cases. Some of my PhD colleagues and studies and classmates, they did take half of their time to buy stocks, to do investments, and they became millionaires. And finally they realized that PhD is nothing to them. Bill is more important. Yes, they left earlier than the graduation. And I saw many cases. Um, many of them found real love and got married and forgot their academic life and went away. So there are so many things, so many attractions, so many off-track tasks ahead of you. So you'd better do a good plan bef before you start your PhD. My suggestion is, first year, find your feet. Where are you? And do some literature review. And this is very important. It's not only you, also me, share the same problem. That is, find the research problem. I took my first year to thoroughly change my research topic. I did submit a very good proposal and got offer in the year of 1997. And I came here to welcome the return of Hong Kong to mainland China. I came from Beijing. And, but for the first year, I realized that I didn't like that topic. I didn't like social development of young children, so I changed my idea. And my supervisor was very nice and supportive to me. She said, okay, you can do that. So I took one year to revise the, to rewrite the new proposal, and I did choose Chinese literacy as the topic. And it's very important. You need to find your feet where you are standing on, and you need to do literature review. And second year, you better do your own research. Pilot study is very important. And I encourage you to do a pilot study before you do main study. Because sometimes your research ideas are so innovative and they are not workable. Unfortunately, your supervisors also are so innovative. So both of you are very crazy. Then you have to find your feet in the view study. Then you have to go to pilot study to see whether it's workable, whether you can find some um, interesting things in the field. So I suggest do your pilot study in the second year. And the third year, 
main study or writing up a thesis depends on your study and the complicating um, um, degree. So if you have data, it's the time to read, write, and to finalize your thesis. On the last year, you need to do Viva, and you need to find a job. At that moment, you'll find two challenging tasks ahead of you. First, my final oral defense and my job. The two tasks are very important at that moment. And I share your concerns and anxieties if you are the final year of PhD study. Because I did, I did the same things. I did send all my letters to universities. And I did try all my best to secure a job. And that's the major tasks of my final year. Then you may ask me for tips about time planning. I have 12 items for you to plan. Then in your plan for PhD study, you have at least 12 items to cover. First, you need to outline your research problem. What is your research problem? I have, I have to tell you that all the examiners will ask you the first question. That is, my dear student, what is your research question? Okay, and I found that even at the last stage, even in the Viva, some students, they didn't know what is near research problem. So my habit for the oral examination is, first question should be always the same question. What is your research question? And second, you need to take some coursework six modules you have to take yeah, and you have to take some research skill courses and third one you have to do some PGA, PGS hours work I suppose, I suppose most of you are full-time student then you are taking scholarship and um, PGS hours should be 100 hours per year and we're going to assign you to um, scholars and uh, you to do some teaching assistant or copying the job the fourth one, meeting with your supervisor and panel members. And the fifth one, collecting data, field work. And six, analyzing data, reporting measurements. Seven, writing papers, chapters, articles. Eight, rewriting, because your supervisor will give you some feedback. And most of the cases, your first round feedback will be, this is garbage, go home, rewrite it. Okay, uh, this is not my supervisor. And you have to rewrite the whole, whole chapter. That's quite normal. And most of the cases, you have to present before you find a viva. And we have the conference ground. Okay, every PhD student is entitled to get conference sponsorship from Hong Kong U. And you have to go to international conference. That is very important. I suppose you do it in the third year of your PhD study. Or the last year. Because in the international conference, you will find the most important people in the field. Uh, most of the relevant jobs, relevant jobs will be announced there. And international exposure and connecting are very helpful to you. So that's very critical. Do not do your conference trip so early. Some students, they did their conference trip in the first year. That's too early, because you have one conference ground to use, only once. It's a one-off ground, okay? And, okay, drafting and rewriting the manuscript. And I think this is the tough job, especially to those Chinese students whose mother, mother tongue language is not English. It's understandable, but you I, I, my suggestion is you take time. As long as you write more times, you are more familiar with the writings. And it's a kind of time um, exercise. Okay. And the last two things, last two things. Enjoy your holidays and typhoons. Yes, 
It's very important, very impressive to me. My first visit to Hong Kong U was supposed to be one month, but I met with the uh, uh, typhoon, of very, the strongest on record. So I shortened my visit because at that moment, Hong Kong U, the whole campus was closed. I did nothing, just stay at the hotel. So I thought, my God, Hong Kong is so terrible. That's my first impression of Hong Kong. When I went back to Beijing, my friends told me, listen, everyone's first visit of Hong Kong is terrible. So never mind, for the next visit, you will definitely love Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And the next year, I was invited again as a visit scholar. And I did one month visit, and I fell in love with Hong Kong and Hong Kong U. So that's it. And the last one is something you never expect, but you have to expect. So I say, expecting the unexpected. Who knows what will happen the next day? Tomorrow, who knows? And you have to expect, and you have to be prepared for that. So 12 things to weave into your very busy schedule. So I have 10 tips for you to do that. How to do annual planning. So you, you'd better have a year plan. First, be realistic about when you can start your job and when you can start studying. Be realistic. You have to do some preparations. You have to do some trips. You have to go home to say hello to a mom. And you have to go home to have dinner with your mom. And these are all unexpected things from our next generation students. And you have to devote time to do planning, to do revising, and you have to try to figure out what kind of time your research will take or last. You don't know never, you, unless you do it. You will never know how long it, it will take unless you do it. And you have to allocate appropriate time for any traveling you're going to do for research. For example, all faculties, uh, education research, most of the cases will take quality studies, and that will be few study. Um, you have to go to rural area and counties for one month, two months data collecting. That's really time consuming, and you have to plan in advance. And you have to include other things that's non dissertation related. For example, you want to go to church, you want to learn piano, you want to learn some other things, and all this new plan will occupy a substantial part of your schedule. Then I suggest you have clear and achievable objectives of every week. And don't be so ambitious. Focus on one thing at one time. And you need, uh, the other thing is you need to leave time for editing and correcting. You know, all faculty is encouraging students to send their thesis for professional editing. Do you know that? How about other faculties? Do you have this service or requirement? Okay. And we had this tradition for a long time. And I was here in the year 1997 and 2000. At that time, all faculty asked students to send their dissertation for professional editing and correcting. So it's a huge money. If you need a good quality work, normally around 5,000 Hong Kong dollars. Do you know that? Don't know, okay. And uh, you will know soon. Mm. So you have to leave time because we found that all the professional service provider found that in certain period of every year, they are very busy. So they got many, many requests from Hong Kong UPH students. So that's the peak period. So if you, want, you don't want to be delayed, you'd better submit your thesis earlier to the editor. Then you can get better service. That's very important. And you know that when they are managing many thesis simultaneously, they have no time to give you very careful editing. That's very important. 
And I have one more personal tip to share with you, which cannot be put into the PPT because it's not so ethical. For example, yeah, it's, it's very personal. And maybe at that time it worked, but now maybe not. Um, I, I submit all my chapters one by one out. For what? Not for permission, publication. For free editing and correcting. So I submit my digital review as a paper to journal, and I got very careful editing service from some editors. Some editors are very nice. They give you uh, a long list of editing corrections. And some reviewers are very critical. They give you very insightful and critical comments. And so many big holes. You'll be very surprised to find that. Oh my god, I didn't realize that. There are so many big holes in your research. Then they pick up. And I sent my chapters one by one out. And I got all the free service editing service and, and yes for free and um, I was very lucky and finally I got one friend who is a New Zealand scholar and she did the proof reading for me without any chart okay and she she I, I, I uh, yeah if you say there was any chart that's one dinner so I, I treat her with a dinner then that's my service fee so I got it done then reward yourself. And I, I like shopping when I was here. And I, this is my good habit. I, I like shopping. When you feel you are very stressful, yes, a very useful way to get relaxed is to shop. Yes. You go shopping more. And I, yes, I find very very interesting phenomenon in myself. The highest price you purchased, the highest stress you root out. <laughs> yes. Mm. So reward yourself with good shopping and you, you'll get relaxed. And you'll be very happy to come back to work because your credit card is overloaded. <laughs> okay, if you fall behind your schedule, then you have to rework your plan. That's very important. Now, we have understand we have understanding about the planning, right? But more stand, understanding will be like this. Planning is part of your problem solving. First, P stands for purpose. You need clearly define the problem. Second, you need to collect all the information you need. The time, the resources, the experience and skills you have. And third, you need to find solutions, ideas, tests, experiments. And fourth, you need to plan. We have the five wives, one husband approach. That is five W's, one H approach. And action. Act is more important than planning, always. So you have to do your action right away. Of course, you need to monitor your own progresses to monitor your roles. And you have to do review. Um, I, I suggest you do, do the review every week, at least. And I give you a framework. Okay, it's a PhD training. So I have a habit, or maybe it's a good habit. Whenever I do anything, I have framework. When I shop, when I'm shopping a car, I have a framework. When I'm shopping a handbag, I have a framework. When I have a drug, I'm do anything with framework because I got used to framework. So my question for you, everybody here, do you have a framework for your study right now? Not yet. You have a big problem. Now I have one framework for you to plan your PhD study here. We have two dimensions to analyze the task. Every day you, have, you are encountering many tasks and we have one dimension for the importance. The other, import, the, the other dimension is the urgency. So you have to divide the events into two types, four types. 
Of course, everyone agrees that the must do right away is number one, this. That's a very important and very urgent task you have to do right away. And the second task is which one? Two or three is totally depending on your personality. Some people, they love to do the urgent one. Some people, they love to do the most important one. And I suggest you do the most important one. This is my personal uh, value, and it's up to you. You can choose. And it's a kind of delay, of course, to the most urgent one. But I have to tell you that I think important things are always important. Urgent one can be delayed. This is my um, old man's tip. Okay, I'm, because I'm 1960s, so I'm a middle age, uh, almost 50. So I think at this age, I can tell you that take easy, don't be hurried, and wait for one more night, and tomorrow the problem will be solved itself. Yes, I have some very good ex personal ex experience. I thought that today it is a problem, tomorrow is not. The problem is gone. So just take one more day and do the important things right now. Okay? Of course, everyone agrees that the last or the least important thing should be done at the last moment. Then, how to do day to day planning? It's very important to do day to day planning. Because every day you have something to do. So before you get back to your office, you better have a plan for today. And I think it's very important and very helpful if you take three to five minutes per day in the morning. So I did this. Um, when I walk back to office, I normally take three to five minutes to think about what I should do today, what I should do in the morning, what I should do in the afternoon, and all the things I have a list. So it's a, it's a cycle of plan, do, review. Plan, do, and review. So every day you have to go through the three, the three stages, and then you have a very pr productive day. And every day you should try and keep a set, a set number of hours. For example, when I was a PhD student at Hong Kong U, I, can, I could manage to keep more than 10 hours devoted to my PhD study at Hong Kong U per day. So that's substantial. 10 hours, then you can finish very early. So I have to, I'm very happy to tell you that they said I'm the first one in the Faculty of Education completed PhD within three years. Remember, that was the year of 2000. At that moment, most of my classmates, they completed PhD within six years to eight years. So I completed my PhD study in three years. So because I devoted double time every day to my PhD study, so it's very important to make it successful. And of course, if you completed your tasks, please reward yourself, okay? For example, you can go to play table tennis. You can go to shopping or swimming. And just keep yourself away from your laptop, from your computer, and from your lab. And this is my personal share, very personal, okay? Yeah, I have more than 10 hours to work on my PhD. So, <coughs> Romy is not built up overnight. And three years should, be reason, should, should have some reasons, right? Yes, I block my every day into three blocks, three time periods. The morning block, the afternoon block, and the night block. So I have one hour swimming every day, and I personally believe that the best time for your physical exercise is not morning. It is afternoon, 
because after a long day working, you feel very exhausted, you feel tired, you need new air, you need to take a breath. Then I suggest you go to do some sporty activities. For example, hiking, swimming, and all the things are very helpful. And you feel recharged immediately, and then you can get three more hours in the night to do work. And I did cooking, so it's not so good because I'm the first one cooked at the great house. <laughs> yes, I'm the first one because I'm the f exactly first cohort of great house residents. I'm the first one who did light cooking. Okay, it's light cooking. <laughs> and at that moment, and very few people did cooking, and very few men did cooking. So um, some Hong Kong uh, <coughs> classmates, uh, residents, they came to me asking, oh, you are cooking, men? Yes, I said, I told them, I, maybe it's my good wish. I said, do you know that in mainland China, men is in charge of cooking? <laughs> I, I, I suppose it's not illusion. It is the real case, okay? And so um, my friends and classmates, they did, they did want to share with my cooking. And some friends joined my cooking. And finally, I found a partner who can pay the bill for me. I, I, just in, I, I was just in charge of cooking, and they were in charge of the bill. So, so it's a very good partnership. Yes. And watching TV, it's very important to get away from your hard work, to watch the funny and lovely and sometimes stupid Hong Kong TV programs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know why? Because the first year when I watched Hong Kong TV programs, I thought, oh my god. Why Hong Kong TV programs are so stupid? <laughs> they are dull. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't understand why the program are so low IQ. But now I love Hong Kong programs because you know why? Because every day you are working very hard and very mind and absorbing activities, and you have used up all your energies and IQ and thinking and minds. So what you want, finally, <laughs> is just to laugh silly and stupidly. <laughs> so, see you. And more important than that, you can find a job. Because when I was watching TV, I was learning Cantonese. I didn't take any Cantonese lesson. Now you are very lucky. We have Cantonese interest group, and graduate school has Cantonese class. But at that moment, I had nothing to learn. So I had to learn from TVB, Fei Chai Tai, Jay. So every day after dinner, I took two hours watching TVB. I'd learn Cantonese. And my first word of Cantonese is a slang language. What we say, slang language, Qi <laughs> Qi. Can you understand that? Qi yeah. Qi. Because I heard that word every day for more than 100 times. So I learned that word. <laughs> and after dinner, you'd better have some chatting. Or when you do dinner, you can do some chatting. And it's a very value platform for social networking. Great House is a very important social networking place because it is pantry, every other floor. So two floor students will join together, sit down watching TV and having dinner together and chit chatting. So I make many friends there. So uh, my partner came to me one day asking me whether she can join me for the lunch or dinner. I said, no problem. You just watch a bowl and pay the bill. I do the cooking. No problem, deal. Then I got something to pay the bill and to watch the bowl, and I just enjoyed 
to cooking. I think cooking is a good relaxing activity. When I was, do when I was doing cooking, I think I really got relaxed. I forgot my headache work. Yes. And you took food as your artwork. Mm, very important. And that's the last thing. It's the most important thing. You have to guarantee eight hours sleeping. It's very important. I, I was very successful in managing three hours sleeping every day. It's very important. So, um, you know, in summer, Hong Kong is very hot, and I took air conditioning every night to get a very good sleep. I think it's valuable. Should do that. Okay. Don't save energy. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be mad. Okay. So eight hours sleeping. Sleeping is very important. And I know that some of you have the problem of sleeping. That's not so good for pH study because you have to be strong enough physically and psychologically to do this PhD fighting. Okay. Then I have the second topic to talk with you. How to do managing. And I have 10 tips for you to manage your PhD study. First one, manage your supervisor smartly. And I'll talk to you later about this subtopic. And second, staying focused. And third, starting with a realistic plan. Fourth, being flexible. And fifth, stay sane. That is, aware of all the things. And psychologically healthy. But how to do it? I said, physical exercise, cooking, shopping, hiking, do all the things that will make you keep sane. Okay? And you have to set up some achievable deadlines. And you have to be sticky to your achievable deadlines. And you have to do stop and start at the right, at, uh, at the good timing, okay? You need to know when and how to stop and start. And sometimes you have to choose very critical reviewers and examiners to help you. So I did this in international conference. I tried to get, uh, try to outreach some scholars in the field. And I found my chairperson of my oral examination. And she is a very nice professor from Canada. And that's why we had some very good connectings before my final submission. So, and when she visited Hong Kong U, we had talk meeting. Then my thesis was marked as excellent by her as the child person. So this is very important that you prepare all the things very carefully. And all we think about the next step. Okay, then we come to the first concern I mentioned earlier. It's a very good research topic, should be what? Okay, I agree that it's the hardest part to find a good research topic. And every time you want to change, then if you want to change, can you use my framework as follows? A good research topic should be theoretically significant. That means, as a PhD research topic, you should have some contribution to the theory development. And second, practically important. That means your research would have an impact on the reality, would input into practical improvement. Sorry. And you have to be contextually relevant. And this is very important. Um, I did my studies in Beijing, Hong Kong, and Singapore, the three cities, and compared the three cities. Do you know why? Strategically, deliberately. Do you know why I choose the three cities? Contextual re relevant. Do you know why I, I choose the three cities? One key word. For what? For job. Because I want to work in future in the three cities, either go back to Beijing or stay in Hong Kong or go forward to Singapore. So I study in the two cities and guarantee myself 
has enough exposure and experience about the three cities and the need look at my CV and thought that oh this guy is familiar with Singapore and this one this guy is familiar with Hong Kong and he can do the job. This is my contextually relevant. That's very important. So finally I got offers from the three cities. Yes, I got it. And personal interest, of course, I'm also personal interest in the three cities. In the past 20 years, I have been working in the three cities. And previous on task, yes, no one has done that. I, no one has done the comparison among the three cities. I'm the first one. So everyone will cite me. So my first paper has been very frankly cited by the field. And the methodological doable. Yes, you have to think whether your designs and methodologies could be <laughs> implemented in the three cities. And if you don't, then it's okay. The other challenging topic, how to manage a supervisor. I forced that model. First, understand your supervisor. Their goals, their skills, their hates, their loves, and their inadequacies. And the, the most important thing I didn't mention in the PowerPoint because it should not be written up. That is, understand the age of your supervisor. Do you know why? Do you know why? You don't know that, okay. I'll tell you. So you cannot quote me formally, okay. Because age to professor means everything. I was very lucky. My supervisor at that moment was around 30 or 40s. And she was a young scholar, rising star in the university. And she has no administrative jobs, no management jobs, and just an uh, assistant professor. And she was very dedicated to the situation. We met with each other every week. And for one survey, for questionnaire de development, we met up for 30 times to develop one instrument because she had time. And age means everything. But now she's, around, she's more than 50s, so she has no time to meet with me. Of course, I'm independent now. And age means that your supervisors, if your supervisors are around 60s, that means she, had, she or he is a well-established scholar in the field, is the most wanted scholar in the field, then as his or her student, you have no way to get much time from him. That's very difficult. If you have a young scholar, mm, I'm not a young scholar, so not like me, you can, you'll, be, you'll be very lucky to have more time. So it's very important. And you need to understand the word very carefully and thoroughly. That's very important. Step two, how to work with the supplies. First one, you'd better be frank to your supervisor. You'd better tell them immediately about your personal problems and academic problems. It's very important. It's your supervisor who can save you out. Don't hide yourself. Don't cover any problems. That's ridiculous. That's stupid. So be frank to your supervisor. will definitely help you a lot. I did this and I found very helpful. And second, think positive. Maybe sometimes your supervisor are very harsh to you, are very tough to you, and even blame you scope you, but don't be negative, think positive. This training is very important to your development. After that painstaking suffering, you can finally become a butterfly. Okay, So you need to work hard and you'd better write some internal notes, emails, conference papers and journal articles co-authoring your supervisor. Get your supervisor involved in all your academic life. That's very important. And sometimes you advocate for
for your supervisors. Her series, his series, and his achievements, and do some social networking. Get involved in his social networking. And your supervisor will definitely be very proud of introducing you to his 